Hey guys, I doing? It's Kevin Sack here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Um, happy Sunday, and today I want to go over um, real life tickets. So, me closing real life tickets. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, do IT videos, do that stuff, support me. Let's talk about how to get into IT. So, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way, you know when I go live. All right. So, these are going to be like really easy tickets. I, 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 I hope so. Um, let's have a look, okay? So, let me share my screen with you. There we go. So I have my tickets right over here, and let's go over them one by one. So ticket number one, fonts. Good morning. Can someone install fonts on my computer? So this this is a ticket that that um uh, you commonly will get in help desk. So if you're new to help desk or IT support, sometimes you're gonna get emails with with people that are asking for fonts. So usually for that is you will go into like Google Google Fonts, and then when you do that, it's called fonts.google.com. You would just literally go into the fonts and get whatever they want. So if it, they want open sans, you could download family. You could download all the different types. And then literally you open it up. Um, and then basically you hit install. And you install it on the computer. So you, you go you go one by one and you install the fonts that they need for their computer. So if they want sans, they want sans. If they want if they if they want italics, they, they we give them italics. So any type of fonts that they ask for, you know, obviously they're not going to be able to install it. You need admin rights for this. So, see how it works? How it works totally fine for me. It won't do that for them. They, they literally they need they will call you as a help desk or IT support request to install it because you cannot do this unless you have admin rights. And it's gonna like see how it doesn't do anything for me. But in real life scenario, you would have to hit install, and then it's gonna prompt you for your for your help desk or IT support uh, password because this by default is blocked for them and they cannot do it so that that's basically what it is so you download all the all the fonts then when you're done downloading all the fonts you literally will open up word word or whatever application you're trying to use and then you go into uh the, the application and it will let you know if it's there so you go here and i'll show you what i'm talking about let me go to we go into science so here, you will see a bunch of fonts. So this is a request that you may get, you may not get. I, I don't know. It depends on the environment. But for if you work for like a, like a place that uses Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Design or any of those things, you might get that request. You might see it in your in your job. So what you do is you just install the font that they're asking for, they need. And then when, in, in order to confirm that, you go in there and, and, and install it. The other way to confirm it is if you go into your start menu and you type font and you go into font settings, I believe it is. And here you have all your fonts. And here you could just in install, you could just uninstall it if needed, but also it tells you here if the fonts are installed properly. So obviously you go here, you type sans and you see that there's a bunch of fonts that I just installed and they're actually installed properly. So if you go and you type fonts, that's the one way. The other way is going into control panel and you go into fonts right here. It's like the old classic way, like Windows 7. And basically you just, you just wanna make sure that it's actually properly installed. So you go all the way down to the letter S and you look for sans um, and, you, and you make sure that it's actually installed there. So you just, you just type S-A-N, which is sans, and then make sure that all the fonts are installed, which they are. And then you know you could just you could just remove them if needed. But that's basically ticket number one for you guys today. And I'm going over this because you may see this in your job. And I'm gonna close that out. Obviously, I will put fonts have been installed successfully and close ticket. So that's that's ticket number one. Uh, ticket number number two is Citrix. Let's see what this is. So let's see what's going on. Uh, good morning. Every time I try to remote into my computer, I can't do anything because it's asking for Citrix. So I'm gonna click on this. What is this? So let's open that up detect receiver so usually when that happens is because you don't have citrix receiver installed on your computer so if you don't have citrix receiver installed on your computer you cannot do anything unless you install it first you will get the light version of citrix receiver which it doesn't really look good so i'll show you what that is so this is citrix light light version um and basically what happens is it doesn't look it doesn't look that good so instead of it opening up on 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 the receiver it opens up on a web browser so it, it doesn't it looks really wonky and it doesn't really I, I don't like it so what you do is you you, you figure out um, you ask them like whoever it is this is Marie right 
So you asked him, is this is this Citrix on Mac or is this Citrix on Windows 10? I need to know what, 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 what you have as a machine because you're trying to remote into your computer. Do you have Windows 10? Do you have Windows 7? Do you have Mac? And then they tell you it's Windows 10. So then you would just literally go into Google and tell them to go to Google.com. All you remote into their computer and you type Citrix download uh, workspace. So that's the one that I use. So it depends on the company, but I use Citrix Workspace. And then basically you go here and then you download the, the right one. And then there's also one for Mac. So you go Citrix work, Citrix from Workspace from Mac. And then there's one for Mac right over here, which is a D DMG file. So you would just download the appropriate one, uh, the correct one, and then you install it on their computer. And then when you when you log in again, you just say, see how see how it says here? I'm gonna click on this again. You just say detect receiver. And then you go to the next page, and you should say already installed. So you go into Citrix receiver, um, already, already installed. So, so you show you how it looks like, because I can't show you that, because I'm I'm gonna go over this at some point, so don't worry about that. But here you would you would say already installed. Let's see if I could actually get a screenshot for you. So see see right here. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. So here already installed so you click that and then you just it just automatically takes you to the next page of the company website and that's it and you're good to go so you you install whatever version they have whether it's mac or windows and then you just go ahead and go to the next page if that makes sense and that's it so that's it you close the ticket out so i'm going to close this out uh actually i put notes on it and that's it so uh ticket number two uh zoom delegation let's see what this is about uh, good morning. Can you please grab me Zoom access, Zoom delegation access, so I could, I could, I can make meetings on behalf, on, on meetings on Scott's behalf. Regards, Melissa. So what she wants to do is she wants to have uh, delegation access to Scott's uh, Zoom. So t two things need to happen here. Um, one thing is you need to go into. Um, let me open up my Outlook for a second. So one thing you need to do is. You need, to, you need to go into properties on, on calendar and you need to make them uh, some sort of editor on calendar on Outlook. So that's that's number one. So this is not going to work unless you do that. Number two is you got to give him delegation in Zoom. So you have to actually go into his Zoom settings, whoever it is, Scott or whatever, and you got to grant the person, um, Melissa, her delegation access. How do you do that? I'll show you how to do that right now. So, and you may get this, you may get this, this, this ticket or this request. If you're using Zoom a lot in your job, so you literally what you do is you, you go into your Zoom account. So I'm gonna open up my Zoom account. Um, for this you need to be a full admin. So you have to be a full admin, otherwise it's not gonna work. So how do you know if someone's an admin or not? You help them. You, you help them log in, and then on their name it's gonna say license. So you see something called license. That means that they have a license for Zoom. If they don't have a license for Zoom. Zoom delegation will not work. You need to have a license for Zoom, otherwise it's not going to work. So what we do is you you go into um, you go into I was going to say I was going to say this settings. Yeah, view more settings. There we go. And then what you do is you just log into your account. You guys already know my what my email address is. It's totally fine. Um, you scroll all the way down, and I'll show you where it is. right here it's right here sorry I skipped it so yeah schedule privilege you could you could assign users to your account scheduling meetings on your behalf you could also schedule meetings on behalf of someone that has been assigned to your schedule privilege privilege and you and the assigned scheduler must be a paid plan so you have to have a zoom license otherwise it does not work so then you hit add and then you just put the name of the person and then you hit assign and that's it that's pretty much it and you give them zoom access and then they're able to Delegate on your behalf. So how do you know it works? Basically, what you do is, um, whenever you make a uh, a new meeting, I'll show you. Let me just, I'll schedule a new meeting. Let's see here. Close out of this. So schedule a new meeting here. Found the right one. Here we go. Here you have um, all the way in the bottom in advanced settings. You have to make sure that the user, the client, whoever it is. They go to alternative hosts and, and they'll have a drop down that says you could do on behalf of the person. And you can just put their name in there and then hit save. And then it creates the meeting of using the ID of the person of that company. 
and then you're good to go after that. So, uh, again, like I said, you must have a license for this to work. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You could try as much as you want. It's not going to work. So make sure you have a license and make sure the, 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 the admin, the admin assistant has a license too. And that's it. That's pretty much it for today. It's just, just three simple tickets, three simple videos, nothing crazy. Um, I hope this helps you out. Uh, definitely more more videos of me closing tickets for coming in the near future. Um, hopefully this helps you out. I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell. That way you know when I go live. And I really appreciate it, okay? All right. Take care. Bye. And have a great Sunday. Peace.